quite retarded of me. Mm. Everyone else knows this, but I'm still a bit confused. And mm. what chav, what chav means and where it came from. Do you know about where the word might have come from? I don't know the root of the word. I know it's something to do with that um, pattern that you get on scarves, isn't it? Well, they Bur wear Burberry. They wear Burberry, right? Yeah, but the word itself, I don't think is related. To that. I did some searching on the internet, but I've got some conflicting uh, in information here. Yeah. But basically, obviously, you, you know what a chav is. Yeah, I do. What to describe when someone says well, chav? Well, it's a sort of a housing estate. So I guess the guy, Mike, Mike Skinner from the streets would be a bit of a chav, wouldn't he? It's kind of Adidas trainers, uh, a track tracksuit bottoms, and then to topped off with a little bit of designer Burberry stuff. It's it's just the contemporary equivalent of a casual, what we would call a casual. Yeah. Um, back when we or were teens. Casual. Yeah. Get you, boy. But you know what? I th I also think it's just one of these things that Sunday papers and out of touch people get really excited about because it suddenly gives them a, a bridge to the Ute, doesn't it? Um, well, I suppose because it's a thing that crosses over and uh, it's you know it's a word that's used by them as well as us, as yeah. it were. Yeah, yeah, but it's probably not used by us, so to speak, anymore, is it? Is that's the, usually the sort of thing that, that newspapers catch on to when it's dead, basically? I don't think it is dead. I think it's it's sort of getting going, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Um, because it's just one of those words. Apparently, down here, it's got a list, as you say, for uh, names have always been around for little groups of youths, youths, uh, who were, you know, who are quite fashion conscious and mouthy and sort of t say to you, what are you looking at? Yeah. Uh, when you look in their direction, yeah. mistakenly. I've got to say that the texts have, uh, have come alight with people uh, explaining what chav means. A chav is a kev. Yeah, I'm well, you sure see, that really helps. No, you see, I've got a big long list of uh, of what Chatham in Kent. Ah, you see, that's what some that people is? say. But then uh, the the person I found on the internet said, uh, no, it's actually um, it originates from the Romany world for child, chavi, uh, which so it's a gypsy, a gypsy kid. It's well, it's kind of come from. Uh, yeah, gypsy, a bit like pikey, which is a very offensive That's term. That's very offensive, Adam. Yeah. It's offensive to me and my caravan-dwelling family. Well, there you go, and chav apparently was a similarly offensive term, and then it's become, you know, it's crossed over a bit to mean... Uh, I've never used it until today. No, I never have as well, but I, you know, obviously I want to keep abreast. I'm just checking. I'm quite, you know, I'm getting old now, so I want to yeah. uh, find out what the kids are saying. Um, Scots, Scottish people, of course, uh, call them neds, apparently. Hmm. And what, called Chav's Neds? Yeah. I don't know about that. Really? I don't Why not? Think, I don't think it's the same group of people. How are Neds different to Chav's? A Ned is just a, like, a happy-go-lucky lad in Scotland. A Ned. Yeah, kind of, sort of, a, yeah, kind of, a, might hang around the sh Young Yobs. Yeah, Young That's Yobs. That's a Chav. Yeah. Uh, some people say that Ned is an acronym of non-educated delinquents. Yeah. But apparently it's just a abridged form of the name Edward. Um, this so. is what happens when you do research mm. on the internet. What? You could just get all kinds of information. <laughs> wow. This is the mistake people make about the internet, that it's not like some sort of a dictionary. Or what a, do you mean the mistake? This is it's interesting. It is interesting, definitely. Uh, what, what are you saying? This is all wrong. It's very hard to go to the internet for the truth about something. All you get is a sort of misty cloud of random theories from a million people across the world. And that sometimes people approach it like a sort of... F font of truth, you know, like a book. Well, this is a consensus. This it's is like a book uh, that any old sod could write in the internet. Look at it that way. Yeah. A, a, a reference book that any old idiot can put an entry in. Yeah, okay. But um, I've done a certain amount of research and this is the consensus of opinions. It's that good, I've I'm enjoying it. Here. Keep going. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to stop now because it's just a book of rubbish. <laughs> okay. We'll be back with Ditties in the Dock after Nick Lowe. Fantastic, that's Nick Lowe with uh, So It Goes. Lots of people texting us about chavs. Thank you, your texts. We seem to have reached the conclusion that it is indeed a Romany word mm. used by travelling folk. Uh, from the word chavi for child. But apparently it can also mean uh, council... <laughs> council <laughs> housed and violent. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> and uh, just before we leave the chavs alone for this week, can I just quote the Daily Mail, who describes chav women as pulling their shoddily dyed hair back in an ultra-tight bun known as a council house facelift. Yeah. 
Cat Croydon face says I've used it. I handy. hadn't heard that one. Yeah. They wear skirts too short for their mottled blue thighs and expose too much of their distressingly flabby mid midriffs. Midriff. Ah, well, Daily Mail, there you go. Okay, let's speed through this now. Coming up to the last quarter of an hour of the show here on XFM with Adam and Joe. It's Ditties in the Dot. Joe and I are going to battle it out for who gets to play the last song of our two hours. Joe, what have you got? I've got uh, a track by the Fun Boy Thrust, the way that you do it, Ooh. on account of the fact that I had a very nice chat night at the Islington Academy Bar or whatever it was. And what a lovely fellow he was. Yeah, because well, you know, he suffers from depression. Was he okay that night? Yes, he was. He was well medicated. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, he was fairly well known. He was, in a, he was in a great mood, and he's a great guy, and we had a long talk about Nick Haywood, because he still hangs out with Nick Haywood. Does he really? Stuff. Yeah. And so here's, you know, something, not that, they, not that he needs it, but in case he needs an extra 20p royalties, um, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it by Funboy 3, a great track anyway. Yeah man, he's still got it definitely, no question. Yeah. Well that's a smash and hard to compete with, but I'm going to try because I've got Einstein A Go Go by Landscape. Mm. Uh, so we've both unwittingly come in with sort of early 80s classics. And Einstein and Gogo, if you've never heard it before, Landscape were a very weird band. They had an album called From the Tea Rooms of Nock. Can you not whistle during my presentation, I'm helping please? it by whistling the tune. Whistling the tune. Whistling. Um, and yeah, the, the, the Tea Rooms of Mars to the Hell Holes of Uranus was their album. You get it? Crazy. And it was a really, really weird, sort of very early, abrasive electronic album. But they, they, they kind of um, managed to cross over with some really poppy tunes occasionally. Einstein and Gogo -Go was their biggest hit. The follow-up was Norman Bates. Do you remember that one, Joe? Yeah. Which was really weird. My name is Norman Bates. I'm just a normal guy. Won't be playing that one. Ordinary guy, isn't it? A uh, normal guy. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a brilliant song. If you've never heard it, Einstein and Gogo. -Go. It's demented and it sounds very current as well today because it's sort of... The Electro Clash, or whatever you want to call it, which I know happened two years ago. So there, there we go. This is in the dock. It is uh, uh, Funboy 3 with It Ain't What You Do, It's The Way That You Do It, versus Einstein and Gogo. By what are they called? Landscape. So let's say Landscape or Funboy. Those are your key words. 871 1049 The winning song uh, gets to play out the show, plus the winning phone vote is going to win a very special DVD that I've actually lost. What is it? I um, know, oh here it is. It's some sort of interactive uh, DVD music quiz. It's a DVD you put into your DVD player. It's called Beat the Intro. You hear the beginning of a bit of music. A DVD you is. put into your DVD yeah, player? Yeah, one of those ones. Wow. Um, and so it's a great sort of quiz DVD. So the winning vote, you know, you can't actually decide to be the winning vote, but if you are the winning vote, you win. 071 1049 Funboy or Einstein. But first, here's Green Day. <laughs> Yeah, that serves you right for listening. <laughs> oh, this is Adam Joe, XFM Line, and this is Ditties in the Dock. That was Green Day, incidentally, with Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Now, let's see, uh, Ditties in the Dock, we're going to take the best of five callers, and the choice, of, as you remember, is between Landscape, Einstein and Go Go, and Fun Boy 3, Ain't What You Do, It's The Way That You Do It. We've got on line one, Vern. Hello, Vern, are you there? Yes, hello. How are you doing? Not too bad. Goody, and what are you voting for, Vern? Einstein a go-go. Nice. Oh, a good choice. That's one for Einstein. Uh, let's go to line two with Emily. Hello, Emily. Hiya. How are you? All right, thanks. Having a nice Saturday? Wonderful, thank you. Good. What are you voting for? Um, for Funboy, please. For Funboy? That makes it one all. Wow. Track three, Richard. Are you there? Yep, hi there. Hello, Richard. Uh, landscape, actually. Landscape, yeah. Richard. Do you remember Landscape first time round, Richard? Yes, I do. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember both of these tracks, but my preference is, uh, Landscape on this occasion. Can you sing us a line from Einstein and Go-Go? I can, I try to whistle it for the little intro. The yeah, thing. Joe was whistling it before, but I rudely cut him off. Go on. <laughs> that's the fella. Fantastic. So that's 2-1 to Landslide. Jazz, if Jazz votes for Landslide, then Landslide Landscape. is... Landscape. Escape, sorry. Lands Landslide is an Olivia Newton-John song, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I know. Um, Jazz, what are you voting for? Hello, Jazz, are you there? Hello, Jazz. Jazz is listening jazz to some man. jazz. He's gone into Space Man. It's Jazz Man. Taking a break from recording Jazz's new album. Listen, perhaps? Hello. Jason? Jason, are you there? Yeah, I am. Yes, yeah, sorry, somebody wrote down jazz, and your right. name isn't jazz, is it? Jazz, yeah. Maybe From now on, 
You're going to be called Jazz. All right, then. So, Jazz, what, what are you voting for? Fumble three. Fumble three, oh. so that's oh, two no. all. So, oh. Thanks very much for your call, Jason. It's neck and neck. Now, here's the decider. Who is this, Joe? Uh, well, this caller has automatically won Beat the Intro, the exciting quiz DVD thing. Uh, it's, he's called Ben. Are you there, Ben? I am. How are you, Ben? I'm fantastic, thanks, guys. How are you? I'm well, we're both very well as well. Thank you very much. Are you excited that you've won Beat the Intro? I am. Very excited. Have you got a DVD player? Uh, yes, I do. Wow. Um, <laughs> very modern. Uh, because they're expensive, aren't they? And yeah. uh, so what are you voting for? I'm going to have to vote for Fun Boy. Oh, oh Ben! Ben! Well done, you, sir. You freak no of nature. I'm going to bring in uh, landscape next. Yeah, that's possibly. the great thing about our new free plays. We can have the sort of uh, it sort of renders ditties in the dock, sort of slightly irrelevant. But that's not a thing to say. Just as we announce the winner and play it. Um, so there we go. It's a three-two victory to Terry Hall and the Fun Boy Three. We've been Adam and Joe. Thanks for listening for the past two hours. We'll be back with you next week, one till three, with all sorts of maybe slightly better prepared funny things next week who knows <laughs> who was like who was unprepared me okay well don't tarnish me with your brush i'm sorry you say anyway thanks very much for listening lots of love bye here's the fun boy three hi i'm adam hi i'm joe 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 I would like to thank you for choosing. Please have your headset ready for... Adam and Joe, 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 coming through loud and clear. Hello, yes, this is XFM. Yeah. Yeah. See, the problem with that is that it's it's a bit like Ditties in the Dock, isn't it? It's Adam, there's no problem with that. It starts out ironic and then it ends up just being a thing. There's no problem with that. All right, man. But there's no problem with today. Look look at it today. I, it's amazing, isn't it's it? It's a beautiful day. It's crisp and cool like New York in the winter. Oh, or like crisps. London is my New York. Mmm, I agree mm. with you. I've just had an amazing thing happen to me. What? I went into one of my favourite shops, the cinema store on Shaftesbury Avenue on the way into the show. Yeah. And uh, I saw in there, behind a table, all on his own, Michael Winner. Michael Winner. He was, was he having a dinner? Signing. He was. And there was nobody there. <laughs> the staff of the shop were chatting to him. <laughs> what was he signing? Just at random DVDs. His books. His oh, biography, okay. which is called. Uh, Come on, Adam. Uh, um, what would Michael Winner's biography be called? Autobiography. Uh, I'm a winner. Nearly. Um, winner takes all. Winner takes all. Yeah. Well, it's not true. He hasn't taken everything. And I've been watching Michael Winner films recently. Which ones? Uh, particularly a film called The Sentinel. Do you remember The Sentinel? Oh, yeah. We watched that when we were younger. It's quite a gross uh, film, I think. Yeah, recall. listeners, I recommend The Sentinel for an unintentional laugh fest. Yeah. Um, it has, it's about a house that's built on a portal to hell. Uh, and The Sentinel has to guard the portal to hell. And at the climax of the film, the denizens of hell emerge from the portal. And because they couldn't afford uh, elaborate prosthetics, they just got freaks. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? They, they <laughs> get right. genuinely deformed people. Yeah, nice one. Do you want me to go into this? I've got a small anecdote about this. Come on, let's hear about it. Okay, so... Wait, uh, are you reading from Winner's book now? I'm, I'm going to paraphrase from Winner's book. It was a reasonably budgeted film, The Sentinel. Didn't have enough to make up 50 people in prosthetics. So I decided to use genuinely deformed people. <laughs> My assistants gathered a group of the most amazingly deformed people. They were all very, very nice human beings. But then things go wrong because the crew of the Sentinel refuse to eat with the freaks. They're so disgusting. You remember them, they've got like big deformed lips and huge saggy faces and elephantitis and all these genuine conditions. Not sure huge saggy lip is a genuine condition. But the crew refuse to eat with them. The crew demand that a screen is set up. That's pretty rich coming like from lunch. your average crew. You know? Yeah. So they, they demand a screen is put up so they don't have to lay eyes on these freaks oh. while they eat. Winner can't take that. He says, this is disgusting. And Winner always eats in an air-conditioned Winnebago. He never even eats with the crew, so he goes... He's he actually called a Winnebago. Oh, Michael Winnebago. <laughs> so, Winner says, I'm coming to lunch today. I'm going to sit with the freaks and show the crew my view on this matter. Does, does he use the word freaks all the way through? Uh, he does. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to sit with the freaks, I quote, to show my view of this matter. Okay, so lunchtime comes around, and the punchline to the anecdote is, to my endless and great shame, 
I didn't eat with the freaks. <laughs> I went and ate with my went in my Winnebago because they were a bit too horrible to look at. Is that what he says? Yeah. So for half a paragraph, he goes on about how he's gonna rise above it and eat with the freaks and show the crew. But when push comes to shove, he <laughs> just eats in the Winnebago. So, and I got him. So with this anecdote in mind, I got him to sign my book. I should have eaten with the freaks. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> nice people. Full stop. <laughs> That's brilliant. Wow. And all that happened in about half an hour on my way to the show. Wow. I can't compete <sighs> with that.